In this section, we are going to analyze the stability of graph filters to scaling perturbations of the shift operator. The scaling of shift operators is a perturbation form that is not very realistic, but it nevertheless is useful to illustrate proof techniques and insights, which will be used and discussed when analyzing more general perturbations. Our focus is to prove the stability of graph filters to scaling. The bulk of the presentation is a proof, which you are advised to follow with a pencil in your hand. Shift operators describe the support of graph signals. Sometimes they are estimated from data, sometimes they change over time. In either case, they are not God-given and immutable. This motivates the study of their deformations. In particular, the result of running the same graph convolutional filter on similar graphs. In this particular section, we consider a scalings of the edges of the graph, so that the shift operator S is deformed into the shift operator hat S, given by the product of S with the scaling factor 1 plus epsilon. This is a reasonable perturbation model in the sense that each edge undergoes the same relative scaling. Edges change proportional to their values. But the model is also unrealistic because all of the edges change by the same proportion. Unrealistic though it is, scaling opens the door to illuminating discussions, and we will see in forthcoming lectures that the stability proof for scaling contains the essential arguments that are needed in more genetic proofs tied to more realistic perturbation models. We are going to prove a theorem stating that integral Lipschitz graph filters are stable to scaling. In particular, given two graphs with shift operators S and S hat, the latter a scaling of S, along with an integral Lipschitz filter with constant C, the operator norm difference between filters H of S and H of S hat is bounded by the product of the Lipschitz constant C of the integral Lipschitz filter and the scaling coefficient epsilon. This is a first order bound. There are higher order terms that we lump in a term of order epsilon squared. The theorem states that stability of graph filters to deformations of the graph is possible. No surprise here. But the important point to remark about the theorem is that it requires the use of integral Lipschitz filters. This could be somewhat unexpected. Integral Lipschitz filters are not the first thing that comes to mind. More importantly, we know they have a limiting drawback they can't discriminate high-frequency features. Let us show a proof before we elaborate further on the conclusions of the theorem. The key arguments of the proof are in the graph Fourier transform domain. We state two facts about the GFT and the frequency response of the graph filter. We will use them in the proof. The first fact is about writing the signal X in terms of the components of its GFT. If we are given the GFT tilde x, we can recover x as the sum of tilde xi times vi, where the vi are the eigenvectors of the shift and the tilde xi are the entries of the GFT. The sum is over all eigenvector indexes. This fact is just an alternative way of writing the inverse GFT. Indeed, write the I GFT as V times tilde X. And notice that the columns of the matrix V are the eigenvectors VI and that the rows of tilde X are the entries of the GFT. We can then expand the product to obtain the sum of tilde xi times vi over eigenvector indexes. This is an expanded form of the sum that we wrote in the claim of the fact. 
The second fact is about writing the derivative of the frequency response as a series. This derivative, denoted as tilde h prime, can be written as the sum of k times hk times lambda to the k minus 1. As a consequence, the product of lambda with tilde h prime is the sum of k times hk times lambda to the power of k. To prove this fact, we just recall that the frequency response is a series, where the derivative of each summand is k times hk times lambda to the power of k minus 1. We can now start with the proof of the theorem proper. The first step in the proof of this theorem is to translate the perturbation of the shift operator into an expression for the perturbation of the filter operator. To do that, we consider the filter difference h of s hat minus h of s. We write it explicitly in terms of the polynomials with coefficients hk that represent the respective graph filters. We have a difference of two polynomials, one on s hat, one on s. We further write s hat as 1 plus epsilon times s, which is the definition of the perturbed shift, and regroup all of the terms in a single sum. We now expand the binomial term involving the perturbed shift, but we perform the expansion to first order only. Thus, 1 plus epsilon to the power of k is replaced by 1 plus k epsilon as dictated by the first order approximation of a binomial. All other terms of the binomial expansion are grouped in the matrix OK of epsilon. Upon substitution of this expanded binomial into the expression we derived for the filter difference, the terms plus and minus s to the power of k cancel out. We are left with a simple expression where summons in the series are of the form hk times k times epsilon times s to the power of k. High order terms are grouped in the matrix O of epsilon. This matrix is of order 2 because the filters are analytic. We have thus reduced the filter difference to the sum of two terms. We repeat the result here for ease of reference. The second step of the proof involves evaluation of norms in this expression. To do so, define the filter variation delta of s to represent the first summand, which is the one that includes terms that require further processing. Applying the triangle inequality to the equality in the first line, we bound the operator norm of the filter difference by the sum of the operator norm of the filter variation delta of s and the operator norm of the matrix O of epsilon, the one that contains the high order terms. We must now recall the definition of the operator norm of the filter variation delta of s as the maximum norm of the product delta of s times x over all vectors x that have unit norm. Consequently, the theorem follows if we manage to prove that the norm of the product between the filter variation delta of s and a vector s of unit norm is less than c times epsilon, with this fact holding for all vectors x that have unit norm. The next step in the proof is to shift the analysis to the GFT domain so that filter properties can be leveraged. This is the critical step in the proof. Consider then the product of the filter variation delta of s with an arbitrary unit norm input vector x, 
the norm of this vector is 1, because we are looking at the computation of an operator norm. Recalling this fact will be important later on. We now invoke fact 1 in the proof preliminaries to write x as a sum of the eigenvectors vi of the shift operator s multiplied by the respective entries of the GFT of x. This is where we move the analysis to the GFT domain. Upon substitution of x by its inverse GFT expression, we reorder terms in the resulting sum to facilitate further manipulations. Given that the vectors v sub i are eigenvectors of the shift operator s, we have that s to the power of k times v sub i can be simply written as lambda sub i to the power of k times v sub i, with lambda sub i representing the eigenvalue of s associated with eigenvector v sub i. Using this fact, the product delta s times x, which contains terms of the form s to the power of k times v sub i, can be rewritten in a form that involves terms of the form lambda i to the k times v i. The shift operator is replaced by an eigenvalue. The steps we have performed so far have led to a remarkable expression, because the derivative of the filter's frequency response has appeared. Indeed, if we isolate the scalar terms that appear multiplying lambda i in the innermost summation of our last expression, we can invoke fact 2 in the proof preliminaries to claim that this is the product of lambda i with the derivative of the filter's response till the h of lambda i. The recognition that this factor appears is the most important step in the proof. All of the other pieces of the proof are either leading towards this recognition or building from this recognition. The proof is almost done. We just need a fourth and final step where we use the integral Lipschitz condition to bound the product of lambda i with the derivative of the filter's response. To do so, rewrite the expression we have just derived, which is remarkably simple for such a complicated analysis, by the way. This expression involves the quantity we bound with the integral Lipschitz condition. We therefore need to reduce the expression in the first line to a form that allows us to use the bound on the absolute value of lambda i times tilde h prime of lambda. We can do that if we compute the energy of delta s times x, so that we can use the integral Lipschitz bound on the square that appears, together with the fact that the input signal x has unit energy, which is preserved when we move to the frequency domain, this leads to a bound of the form c epsilon squared. We now take a square root on both sides to complete the proof. The theorem says that integral Lipschitz filters are necessary for stability to deformations of the supporting graph. The proof shows that this is not an artifact of the analysis. The result is tight. A series that represents the product of lambda i with the derivative of the frequency response of the filter appears in the proof. This is the term that requires the use of integral Lipschitz filters. 
This is somewhat unexpected. When analyzing a learning parametrization, it is natural to expect a stability versus discriminability trade-off. A less stable model is more discriminative, while a more stable model is less discriminative. But the appearance of integral Lipschitz filters means that, in a sense, we get a non-trade-off. Graph filters can be stable only if they are integral Lipschitz. But integral Lipschitz filters have to be flat at high frequencies. Therefore, it is impossible for them to discriminate high frequency signals. It is impossible to use a graph filter to separate signals with high frequency features and be stable to deformations at the same time. There is no trade-off. It is simply not possible.